So, yeah, we're running a, a few minutes ahead of time, um, which is a bit, a bit of a miracle, um, certainly when I'm involved. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm going to introduce next our next speaker. So um, this is Sam Basu. Sam is the Senior Developer Advocate at Progress Software. Hi, Sam. Welcome. Um, hello, hello. Hi. So Sam's going to talk to us about rethink API troubleshooting to deliver value. Over to you, Sam. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Uh, you know, uh, thank you to Chris and Ivan and everybody else at API Days. Thanks for having me here. It's uh, yeah, it's it's fun, and I uh, hope you all are having a um, great day. Um, you know, we had a lot of content, and uh, I'm glad that I have a couple of extra minutes, which I can happily use because 20, 25 minutes is not a whole lot of time. And I know it's uh, closer to the end of the day for uh, some of you folks, um, uh, if you're in the EU or uh, Britain, but uh, I'm actually in the US, kind of close to lunchtime for me. So I don't want to keep you or be the person that's between you and like a cold beverage. So I'll try to keep it short and maybe hopefully a little entertaining. I, I do have some slides, but they're not uh, important. I want to show you as many things as I can, uh, you know, with APIs. Um, so like Chris said, I am Sam Basu. I am a dev advocate at uh, Progress Software. Uh, that handle there is me online pretty much anywhere on the internet, uh, you know, Skype and Twitter and GitHub. And so if you need to get hold of me, that's where I'm at. So let's talk uh, APIs, right? Uh, I'm going to maybe do like, you know, seven to eight minutes of, you know, uh, kind of setting up the stage. And I want to show you some things uh, once we get into it. So first up, we are all living through, you know, a global pandemic, uh, no matter where you are in the world. So I hope you are safe and your families are well taken care of and you're trying to be as uh, productive as you can. Uh, since uh, most of you are actually on the other side of the little pond we call Atlantic, uh, I'm, on the, I'm on the US side here. Uh, I live uh, up north uh, in in Northwest Pennsylvania, right up by, uh, you know, we have five Great Lakes up north. Uh, I live by one of them called Lake Erie, and it's beautiful most times of the year. Uh, winters get a little harsh, uh, we get a lot of uh, snow, but uh, yeah, here I am. Um, so let's talk about, you know, APIs, and, and, and part of it kind of starts with the fact that it's, you know, 2022 will be uh, it'll be like Thanksgiving and Christmas time in no time. Uh, we are already looking ahead at the next year and we have tons and tons of data. Everybody does, right? So in all of your applications, whatever uh, you are building uh, depends on data. And, and the only way uh, anybody could get to your data or you could expose your data out is through APIs. So they are key. Uh, to kind of any application stack working. Uh, so I'm going to start off, maybe talk more towards from the developer standpoint, and then uh, I'll switch gears towards the end and talk about more of the user and you know um, your, your support systems and how uh, you manage APIs. So let's talk about APIs. And, and clearly, you're, you're all here at API Day as you understand the importance of it. So how do you work with APIs? You have lots and lots of uh, tools as, as developers, and that's a good thing, right? We want to have flexibility of, and choice of being on whichever platform we are on and using the tools that we love. But the right tools can actually really help uh, kind of um, uh, alleviate a lot of the pain that comes with working with APIs. So uh, just a quick um, uh, you know, uh, mention of some of the things we do. Um, I work for Progress Software, and we are all about developer productivity. Hopefully, you have heard about us for are some of the things we uh, do to enable developers to be more successful. Uh, we are talking about like 20 years of, uh, you know, trying to be in the developer space, making UI components for all things .NET, all things JavaScript uh, for, uh, you know, web and mobile and desktop. Uh, but we do a lot of other things as well. We do uh, very strong reporting solutions, testing and mocking uh, frameworks document processing and, and CMS, uh, we were talking about CMS earlier, uh, and lots of productivity tools. So all of that is there to help you and your company and your teams be more successful. But what can we do with APIs? And we have a little thing called Fiddler, which um, hopefully you've heard of. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, some of the latest things we have done with it. Uh, a lot of developers, uh, especially if you're uh, on the .NET stack, we have kind of grown up using Fiddler, but a lot of things have actually evolved. So. Let's just say you have never heard of Fiddler and you do a search, you likely um, end up on the, on the homepage, which is going to talk about the Fiddler family. Uh, and it's actually five different products now. Uh, so we kind of urge you to kind of look through and see which one it is that uh, works for you and, and what exactly you are trying to do. It's all about troubleshooting. It's all about, you know, uh, 
improving the quality of the software that you're shipping. So here's the portfolio right now as we stand with Fiddler. Everything started with what's called Fiddler Classic, which was uh, kind of a Windows-based app that lets you do, it's a network proxy. So it goes under the covers and everything on your computer flows through that proxy. Uh, so, which is a big advantage compared to some of the lightweight tooling that you see on the web, which is only for that browser or that tab. This is everything, right? So that's where we started, and it's it's very rich, uh, but it's been uh, out there for a while. So it was starting to age, and we wanted to make sure we, every developer had access to it. So we took the um, uh, took the time to redo it entirely from scratch, which is now called Fiddler Everywhere, and it's the same product, just works everywhere now, uh, as the name suggests. So you we got you covered on Windows. Windows, Mac, or Linux, you know, for those hardcore enough to run Linux as your desktop, we got you there as well. Uh, but that's not just the only thing. We also do some of the things like Fiddler Core is essentially the engine that you can embed inside of your apps. Uh, if you wanted to build like a dashboard, you can give your users that kind of visibility. And Fiddler Cap and Fiddler Jam are kind of meant for the end user because no matter how much we try, um, we're not shipping perfect software. And a lot of times the users are like, this just doesn't work on my machine. So you need that visibility. Your support teams need that visibility before the bugs come in, before it gets triaged all the way to your dev team. So full visibility of exactly what's going on so you can you know, quash those bugs uh, uh, quickly. So let's talk about Fiddler Everywhere because that's the one I'm going to show you. I'm on a Mac today. Uh, I do run Windows all the time, but my dev machine is Mac. So that this is the one that I run. And it is like, like it says, it, it's a network proxy, but the, the UX is nice. And for in particular for APIs, we try to cater to developers a lot. So uh, it's got a beautiful you know API composer, uh, so you can edit, compose, build, and test your APIs. Uh, we are known to have a beautiful inspector, so you can kind of muck with what's going on on the request and also the response that's coming back. And that's also uh, part of what's called the rule uh, builder. So you can actually build up the rules and then uh, see them play out. Uh, and then we are also about team collaboration because you're not doing this um, hopefully alone. So what happens when you are working in a team uh, where you're building out an API? What happens when you have a middleware team uh, or a services team that somebody else is consuming the APIs for? Or what happens when your users actually want to report bugs on your APIs? So all of that is kind of built in uh, with like team collaboration, right? So that's where Fiddler um, everywhere comes in. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, this one is kind of the newest uh, kid on the block for us. So it gets a lot of love nowadays. It's called Fiddler Jam. Uh, this is really for all of your users, right? So don't ever be in doubt as to what the user is seeing. Uh, let them collect all the information before they file a bug. So you know, and your dev teams know, have full visibility of exactly what is going on uh, in the user's uh, session, right? So that's it. Uh, I did like my slides in like five minutes, right? That's that's good. Uh, so I want to spend the rest of the time showing you stuff. And some of this is going to be high risk, and and that's part of it because we are also streaming. Uh, I am on the same machine, but hey, let's let's learn together, right? So I'm going to step out of this and uh, try to look at some stuff. So first thing is, um, if you wanted to kind of look around, uh, so tilleric.com.fiddler, that's where you can find all the stuff and you can download the bits, be it on you know, Windows or Mac or Linux, get the stuff. And uh, that's where you can uh, get started. So let's start with uh, Fiddler Everywhere, right? So I have it here, and I'm going to launch it. Uh, if it's your first time, it's going to ask you to sign in, but I, uh, I'm already signed in. So we start things off, and it takes a minute to kind of come up and um, get ready. Uh, I didn't turn this off because I wanted to show you. Uh, the first time it launches, it gives you like a, hey, you can look up documentation here, some videos and webinars, uh, some really good tutorials that you can follow through, but you can turn this thing off. Now, right out of the gate, this is the interface that you get. and it has started capturing, right? Like I said, it's a network proxy. So everything out of my machine is going through this. And I have a lot of things turned off, but it's actually almost embarrassing how much it captures. It's it's a lot, little too much. And it sees like, you know, uh, you know, Apple and Microsoft and Google and everybody just like calling home for all of their services, you know. Uh, the OneDrives and the, whatever the services that you are using, they're all calling back home. And you see all of that stack uh, right here. So um, 
let me uh, show you kind of how this looks like. So this is the interface. You have your sessions here, which I'm going to talk about what Fiddler Jam is. You can kind of save off your requests. But this is your live traffic capturing area. And then you have a, your composer, which is where you can build out your API with whichever URL. And you can use whichever uh, you know verbs you want, get, put, post, delete. You can do all of that. Uh, but let's start with uh, live traffic, OK? Uh, and I'm going to maybe open up my browser in the incognito mode. Uh, this is one of my, um, you know, favorite API kind of websites or APIs to hit when I'm just trying to build some, you know, demo stuff. So it's called JSON Placeholder. It's powered by JSON Server and LoDB, uh, and and it's nice. It's uh, it gives you like a restful endpoint, and, and you got multiple, you know, uh, things to uh, hit up, and they support post as well. So if I go here to posts, uh, it essentially gives me some JSON back. Uh, it's in Latin actually. Uh, so this one gives me like hundred uh, JSON items back, and I can. I can filter it down. But with that, I can go back to Fiddler here. And it's a lot here, like I said. So you can see all the things going on. So you can filter, right? So you can say, I only want these request headers. I only want these response headers, right? Or uh, you could say, uh, only show me the ones that have JSON placeholder in them. So now it can actually filter it down. So this was the request. That's JSON, right? So if I uh, hover over like 72,000 bytes, like that's the actual request going out. So uh, you can see the request here. You, you get an overview of exactly what the request was and what the response was, but the, uh, the core of it, the power of it is in the inspectors. So this is where you get to see all of the stuff, like what is the user agent uh, and th what's the response, like the cookies, the headers, whatever is it. So here in the body, you can see like the JSON that came back to my browser. Um, 100 items right there. Now, what I can do here is I can um, open this up and I can do an edit in uh, Composer. So now I have the exact same request that my browser made opened up in my Composer. So I don't have to build this up by hand. And I get the exact same request, right? And I get the exact same response and I can execute this. What is nice here is you can start tweaking things, right? If you're building out an API, what happens when you turn off the do not, dist uh, do not track? What happens when you change the user agent? Uh, things like that. So you can start mucking around with these things and the cookies. What happens, right? So if I uh, if I make a request like here, uh, I want uh, let's just say the tenth one. I don't want anything else. Uh, I can fire that off and uh, execute, and now I only get like the tenth item back uh, with that ID. So it's a beautiful thing that I can just uh, copy this and start uh, playing with this. Now, one other thing you can do, uh, yeah, I don't need to save that right now. But here is my uh, original request, right? So I'm going to have that selected. And I'm going to hit my R key uh, on my keyboard really quick, right? So when I do that, you start seeing that like it's firing off all of these requests from the same process, like the Fiddler process. But these are all the same requests, right? Every one of them. And every one of them is bringing back like 72,000, um, uh, 7,200 bytes, right? So it's firing off that request and getting an HTTP 200 back um, and getting the response. So this is a good way for you to quickly see um, you know, and, and, and this is, I have horror stories. I'm, I'm an old man, so I have horror stories of, you know, not rate limiting your APIs because you're kind of asking for a denial of service attack at, this, at that point. But here's a quick way of you to kind of uh, start putting a lot of load on your APIs and see how your, you know, backend services are, uh, are holding up, right? So um, this is your place to kind of start fiddling around and see how that works. And all of this is coming from um, the Fiddler process or from Chrome. But here's the advantage, right? This is all web, and you can do this in a few other places. But here's the advantage. Since this is a proxy, we can do it for any number of tools. So uh, I'm going to bring up Visual Studio here. And I'm on a Mac, so I'm using uh, a preview version of Visual Studio um, for, uh, for Mac, which is coming out in a few months. So we'll give it a second. It's Thursday for Visual Studio as well. There it is. OK. Now, what if I'm building other stuff? Because uh, as much as the web folks want to think that uh, web is ubiquitous, uh, native apps have a very strong place. So I'm actually going to try to show you some native stuff on you know, mobile or desktop and, and see how that 
how that works out. So um, this is actually a mobile app. Um, this is written in .NET, uh, in, in Xamarin Forms, actually, which is the older version now. We are evolving into something new. But here's my uh, same endpoint. And uh, here is I have a .NET collection of you know, the posts that I'm getting back. And I have uh, a class here where I make the request out. And I get the JSON back, deserialize it. And then I have a UI where I want to just show it all of it. Uh, and this is in XAML. And, and, and this is the same uh, code that's going to run on iOS or Android. Let's run it on iOS, OK? Um, so I'm going to quickly fire this up and start without debugging. Um, now, this is this being Xamarin, it just knows that it has to go to Xcode, do the build, and come back to me with the app package. So that might take a second. And it's trying to come up. OK, there it is. Uh, that's my beautiful new iPhone 13 simulator, which is actually also my present phone. Uh, I was due for an upgrade, so I, I pulled the trigger. So we'll give it a second to come up. Uh, you know, uh, live demos. So let's see if it's going to come up. Build is successful, and it's thinking. It's getting the simulator booted up. It's slow a little bit slow today. I have nine minutes. OK, we can do this. Come on. Come on, iOS. And if you have any questions in the meantime, please uh, fire them away in my uh, or in, in the Q&A uh, comments. Uh, I'll try to show you as much as I can and then maybe save a little bit of time so Chris and me can go over any of the questions that you have. All right, so we're going to give this like maybe another 10 seconds to come back. If not, we're going to move on. Uh, it is trying. It's really trying. Uh, all right. Come on. That is booting up. And finally, there we go. OK. So now you have a mobile app, right? Same exact API that we hit, and we got 100 pieces of JSON back. Uh, I can close this now. I don't need that anymore. But what I wanted to show you was uh, that thing has already been captured. So if I go back here and Fiddler everywhere, here is that last thing. Uh, so now notice that um, this one here, I mean, the, the request and then the response was cached. So we didn't bring in any, bring back any new data. But notice the process here. That's the Xamarin form goes places. That's an iOS process. So we went to a different OS, and we loaded it up, and we still uh, got it in. Uh, one, one good thing we can do is uh, there, there's documentation on how you do this. You can actually make your physical iOS, Android, or any other device kind of go through Fiddler on your, uh, on your computer, right? So you set it up as a proxy endpoint, and you need to be on the same Wi-Fi, and then you need to accept um, you know, a, a certificate. So we can actually look into HTTPS traffic for you, uh, and that's it. Right, so that's a quick and easy way uh, to kind of start looking into uh, you know uh, mobile apps or you know other types of apps. But let me uh, try to switch gears and show you some more things here. Okay, uh, I'm going to start try to close that and try to show you something else. Um, so uh, let me show you. Uh, I'm still trying to bring up my simulator. Quit that. Okay, uh, let me show you one more thing here. So the different project, and I'm going to show you uh, kind of the latest bits with uh, .NET 6. Uh, so I'm opening this up in uh, VS Code. And one of the things um, .NET 6 uh, is trying to enable us to do is kind of uh, a very minimal way of building out your APIs, right? So here's my csproj file. Uh, let me bump up the fonts. It's got really nothing in it. It's just like one line of code here to say, hey, I run on .NET 6. And a lot of things are kind of implicit. So um, you know, my using statements, my, you know, all the drama is kind of gone. It's just one line of code. And my map get kind of points, the whack points to just returning hello world. And I'm returning a person class here as a C-sharp record. And it's Elon Musk, right? So if I go ahead and run this thing now real quick, so .NET run. So you're going to see that uh, the API fires up. It's just like three lines of code, but I am up and running on localhost uh, that particular port. So let's uh, let's get out there. Uh, I'm going to close that and let's go to localhost that. Um, so you're going to see hello world come back, right? And we can go to the person class, which is you know Elon Musk uh, first name last name. So if I go back here and uh, take away that filter. You will see eventually uh, localhost being captured right here. Uh, that's my person class, and that's my first name, last name. So again, your local APIs are covered. 
But what happens when you're trying to use utilize this uh, local API somewhere else? So let me uh, fire up a new window, and you can uh, you can open up like one twenty seven o zero 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 one or whatever is your loopback. I have five minutes left. I hope. Uh, okay. So uh, let me show you one uh, quick little tool. Uh, this is the one that I go to a lot. Applications. It's called Ngrok. Right. So I'm going to expose an HTTP tunnel through my firewall into uh, this local host that I was running. So uh, let's take the person thing off. I just want that, right? And we're going to say, open up this tunnel. What it's going to do is open up a tunnel here so anybody else can access my uh, local host, right? So I'm testing out my APIs with my team. So instead of just doing local host, I can go there. And um, now it uh, fires back that same hello world. Now, let me show you one more thing here. Because we talked about, um, you know, uh, mobile apps. We didn't talk about desktop, which is, again, also the reality for lots of uh, developers, enterprise developers in particular. So I'm going to go to another project here. Uh, let's go to this one. It's actually a .NET MAUI project, which is also running on Blazor. Uh, so uh, we're going to fire this up real quick. And once it comes back, VS Code, what I want to do here is change that one line of code here so I can hit that API uh, from uh, my ngrok uh, endpoint, right? So uh, we're going to come over here, uh, grab the build command because it's uh, still a CLI build. And notice how I'm running this on a Mac Catalyst. So it's actually a .NET app, but I'm running this on um, desktop uh, through Mac Catalyst. So here's my uh, Mac Catalyst thing coming up. And you can see us hit the same endpoint. Um, uh, the local local host endpoint, but um, we are coming in through that tunnel. And again, uh, you can you can based on your configurations, you can open up a port, and then uh, then you have it. But uh, no, I've been told two minutes. Oh no! Oh no! It was uh, it was a previous chat. Okay, I still got I think four minutes, maybe five minutes. All right, I'm really trying to show you as many things as I can here. Um, but uh, before we uh, wait on that to come back, you will have noticed that, um, let's see if I can go to ngrok. Can I search? OK, there you go. So that's my uh, ngrok. And, and the, here's the nice thing. like You can see a 404. You can see the 401s, the 5000s. So you can drill down on exactly which one you want. So here's my, uh, this is now a full Mac desktop application. I can do uh, Windows application as well. Here's my API endpoint. That's Elon Musk coming back, right? So. Uh, that's exactly the request. This is coming from my desktop application, Maui Blazor, right? So you see the Elon Musk come back. So that's the beauty of it. Your mobile apps, your desktop apps, they are all very, very welcome. All right, so I'm going to close all of these uh, things that I opened up. So I'm not chewing through memory and close that. I'm going to show you uh, two more last things. I, I'm being told three minutes. Okay, so three last things. Go so one minute each. So sorry if I'm trying to be as quick as I can. Um, okay. Uh, the next thing I want to show, talk about is uh, this little thing called rules. Okay, uh, let me bail out of this. Uh, so we are back to searching everything. So rules is our way of you setting up things. So this one here is, just says it's a dummy hello world. So what is this? A rule is essentially a way for you to set up things. Like if my URL hits these conditions, or if my headers have this thing, or if my uh, whatever, you can set up a condition. So in this one, uh, I'm I'm copying that. I'm going to copy this URL. Hit that same endpoint, but if I'm looking for that fifth thing, uh, I want to return a manual thing. So you're kind of completely bypassing the server. You're you're kind of responding to it from Fiddler itself. So all I have to do is uh, turn this thing on, right? And then we go over to our browser and we try asking for the fifth thing. I don't get JSON back. I just get hello world because it's uh, manually uh, coming in since it's a proxy and I can feed it whatever I want, right? So. Uh, that's a great way of kind of testing out your things. And also, it lets you do things like uh, what happens when your APIs are delayed by X number of seconds or completely shutting down, which is also what I have for a Twitter fail thing, right? So let me uh, show you this. So here, if I go to Twitter, uh, it, it's a website, but it, it's, a, it's hitting a lot of APIs. One of them is the timeline API. So I have asked it to kind of fail uh, as quickly as it possible, right? So uh, that is saved. And now if I go to Twitter, you're going to notice my timeline experience is going to be really bad because I have shut it off. Um, so right away, it's trying and says, oh, something went wrong. And this is your way of testing out your APIs. How do your APIs degrade 
um, as people are using it, right? So uh, use the rules uh, to your advantage. Now, the one last thing I want to show you, I think I have <laughs> one minute left, is this thing called uh, Fiddler Jam, right? So let me uh, head over here to uh, a new tab, and I'm going to open up uh, this little thing. It's a browser extension, right? So <clears throat> you get some advanced options here. Uh, if I click on them and zoom in, you get like you get to capture videos, screenshots, whatever. This is from a user standpoint for you to support them better. Right, so I'm going to uh, hit Start Capture, and it's telling me, hey, I'm trying to capture your stuff here. So full visibility of exactly what we're capturing. Let's go to like CNN, right? Which is, you know, uh, unfortunately, our modern web. Uh, this is how it is. Like to load up a single web page, we'd need like 300 calls. Like it's it's a lot of stuff, right? And it's a little slow right now with all of that's going on on my machine. But that's it. So I am going to. This thing is beeping red. So I'm going to go in here and. Um, and actually stop it. Uh, so stop the capture, right? So I'm a user. I had issues, and I'm trying to report this. I'm going to get a link, which can also be password protected, and I can turn off um, uh, some of the you know sensitive information. Uh, it's thinking and it's uploading. So essentially, it's being sucked up uh, as a link. And the beauty of it is what I do with it as um, uh, as a dev team or as a um, as uh, it's still not done. It's like 16 megabytes of stuff just in that one uh, session that we captured, right? So we're going to give it a second. Almost done. And there it is. OK, so I'm going to copy this link over. OK, now it's up to your dev team. So I'm going to uh, open this up. And now your first layer of support uh, for supporting your API or applications, this is what they get to open up. And it is your screenshots. It's exactly the capture logs of exactly what was done, including videos of exactly what the user was doing. So if I play this now, you can see that I kind of went through that. Uh, and it kind of uh, syncs with exactly the requests being made as I was pulling up CNN.com. Uh, and it's like a lot of stuff. Like all of these things are captured, right? So you have that full visibility of exactly what's going on with your APIs. And then you hit this little button here uh, that says Open in Fiddler Everywhere. And yeah, do not show this message anymore and proceed. And now we are back into Fiddler everywhere and it's loading up a jam session, right? So all of my jam sessions are here. So my team can just go look into this. And now we have the exact full visibility of replaying any of the APIs, mucking with them and seeing exactly what went on. And for anything that you do, you can start saving a request. So this is where I like to keep my, you know, get, post or whatever else. So you can uh, fire these things up really quickly and not have to recreate it. You have a, a list of saved like sessions or, or you know, uh, requests and responses that your team is working on. So full visibility of exactly what is going on. I am at time. So um, <clears throat> I am going to uh, save the Q&A. But Chris, you, it looks like you're back. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, that was that was really interesting and very, very brave of you to uh, do not just one, but several live demos. I tried. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, it pretty much all works as well. So very good. Um, just got just got one one question. Um, what's the number one benefit that you've seen, and maybe just a quick example of that? So uh, the the biggest benefit is you know having a full network proxy. So it is not just one browser tab. It's not just one process. Uh, developers are uh, building you know desktop applications or mobile applications, and your supporting uh, APIs are in the back end. So you have full access to see exactly what's going on under the covers. And uh, you have that like end-to-end -end story. So it is for your dev teams. It is for your first layer of support teams to kind of dig through. So you can triage before the bugs actually get back to your dev team and you consume more cycles that way. So uh, the biggest benefit is kind of going as low as possible into a network proxy and full uh, capability of you know mucking with those requests and responses to make it um, kind of simulate and do uh, exactly what you need it to do. Fantastic. So yeah, we're we're right up against time now. But yeah. thank you very much, Sam. Really insightful, and uh, yeah, got a few people commenting now saying they love the demos as well. I know I did. So thank you very much. Perfect. And thanks, thanks for having you. me. Appreciate. It.